I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, February the 4th, 2016. Hundreds gathered today in the town of Yehud in central Israel for the funeral procession of 19-year-old Border Police Officer Hadar Cohen. Cohen died yesterday of critical injuries she sustained when three Palestinians armed with knives, guns and explosives carried out a terror attack at the Damascus Gate earlier yesterday in Jerusalem's Old City. The terrorists were shot and killed. Cohen's fellow officer Ravit Miriashvili was seriously wounded in the attack but was able to attend her friend's funeral today. According to reports, Cohen managed to return fire when the terrorists first attacked before she herself was shot and her actions along with those of her fellow soldiers were hailed as preventing even more casualties. Meanwhile, Israel's government press office is considering, quote, far-reaching measures in response to a headline used yesterday to describe the deadly attack. As we reported to you, CBS News in their coverage used the headline, Three Palestinians Killed as Daily Violence Grinds On, referring there to the three terrorists. Israel's foreign ministry had responded harshly. Spokesperson Emmanuel Nachshon said the audacity of CBS's headline is unparalleled. The headline is biased and false. Government press office head Nitzan Chen said we are considering rescinding press passes from journalists and editors who are negligent in their work and present headlines that flip the reality. The first headline was changed by CBS to Israeli police kill three alleged Palestinian attackers and was then changed a third time to Palestinians kill Israeli officer wound another before being killed. Sentences were handed down today to two of the three Jewish extremists who carried out the 2014 murder of Palestinian teenager Muhammad Abu Qader. If you recall, 16-year-old Abu Qader was abducted and then brutally murdered in a revenge attack for the kidnapping and murder of the three Israeli teenagers by Palestinian terrorists that same summer. The two who were sentenced today were 14 years of age at the time, and as they are still minors, their names have not been released. One of them, who is thought to have had a somewhat lesser role in the killing, was sentenced to 21 years in prison. The other was sentenced to life. State prosecutor Uri Korev explained the severity of the court and said the murder of Abu Qader, who was targeted solely for being an Arab, marked a moral nadir. Korev said the sentence imposed on the defendants reflects what we asked for and the barbaric and atrocious act. The man who was seen as the leader of the deadly attack, 31-year-old Yosef Chaim Ben David, was also convicted of the crime, but his sentencing has been postponed as the court considers his claim of mental illness. Abu Qader's family, meanwhile, said they were greatly dismayed by the verdict that both teens should serve life for their son's death. Two Israeli Arab teenage girls attacked a security guard at a mall near the central bus station in the city of Ramle this morning. The girls, who are both 13 and cousins, entered the mall and approached the metal detector security check area, where they were asked by the guard for identification. They then pulled out knives and stabbed the 27-year-old guard, who was lightly wounded in the hand and leg. He called for help, and other guards arrived at the scene and subdued the girls, who were then taken for questioning at the local police station. Longtime leader of the Latin American Jewish Congress has died. Manuel Tenenbaum led the World Jewish Congress's Buenos Aires office and served as executive director of the Latin American Jewish Congress from 1978 to 2007. Prior to that, he led B'nai B'rith Uruguay and was president of the Central Jewish Committee of Uruguay. Tenenbaum died in his home city of Montevideo at the age of 81. An Israeli film won the Sundance Film Festival's World Cinema Grand Jury Prize on Sunday. Sandstorm, directed by Elite Zexer, tells the story of Bedouin women fighting against a conservative society. The film was shot in Bedouin villages in the Negev and is based on an award-winning short film that Zexer directed while she was a student in the Department of Film and Television at Tel Aviv University. And looking now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, February the 4th, 
At 7.30, Israeli politician Moshe Faglin offers the far-right position of the Orthodox community on Israel from a program of Americans for a Safe Israel. At 8 o'clock, Seth Siegel sits with Brett Stevens of the Wall Street Journal and Dr. Ariel Zaban of Bar Ilan University to talk about Israel's groundbreaking work with water in a program of the Jewish Week and American Friends of Bar Ilan University. At 9 o'clock, Mark Golub sits down with Chairman of Americans for a Safe Israel, Mark Langfan, on L'chaim, and at 10, a look at Israel and immigration, followed by episode 5 of the JBS original series, From Date to Mate. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, February the 4th, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.